Yeah, no, I think I think those videos, it's I've I don't think I've ever seen the kids as quiet for for 10 minutes as when they watch that for the first time. Because I mean every everything that you hear and read and see that's Bitcoin related is is in English. Um and so that was the first time um that they actually encountered something in their own language. Um you know, 95% of them speak English as a second or third language. Um, so it's not, it's not their mother tongue. So that was, that was a massive, massive thing for us. I think that video is, is, is having, it's hard to measure the impact of the video because the majority of people that are seeing it in the community are not watching it on YouTube. We're, we're passing around physical copies of it, you know, so the coaches are walking around and they, they're physically copying it from device to device to device. Um, obviously, because, you know, phone credit is, is quite expensive. So they don't want to use data to, to do that. So, but it's having, it's definitely having a really big impact on the ground. Um, and it's such a valuable thing um, because it's, it's, it's oral. So it takes less concentration for somebody to, to take in the information. Um, literacy is also obviously quite a challenge. So, you know, there's a lot of people who can't necessarily read very well, but they, understand their mother language um, obviously so if you can explain to them something in 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 a verbal way uh, they would be a lot more receptive than if you gave them a pamphlet for example um, so that 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 video has done has done a, a, a hell of a lot of good and i mean the coaches spend at least one day a week uh, walking around the township literally just trying to copy copy that video onto as many different devices as possible i mean if if it's possible we would like to get a hard copy of that onto every digital device in the township um so we'll see um but it's yeah it's, it's done a lot of good for sure uh do, do, do you find um actually i guess yeah two questions i mean first off do you find that um because often, often with the less well-off communities, like people, they could, there's often like a lot of scams and like they're rife with like people like, oh, buy, you know, Shibi shit coin, whatever. And it's like, yeah, I guarantee it's going to make, you know, thousands. And I remember like listening to one of the um, podcasts about one coin that the BBC did a few years ago or a year ago. And uh, in that they went to, I can't remember where actually, but somewhere in the African continent. Uh, and they were talking, it was like uh, some of the local priests and like uh, people were actually preaching and stuff had, had started selling this like scam as well. And so I know there's a lot of that that goes on. Do you find that people ever kind of react negatively to what you guys are doing being like oh it's clearly just gonna be another one of these scams is that like an issue that you guys come across or is it not as much because you're probably not promising returns of anything you're saying be careful but here's a little bit and you can use it to to buy stuff as i'll leave it at that question for now uh yeah 100 percent um the the bitcoin is a scam is it's it's one of the biggest biggest challenges we have to convince people that it's not um so yeah, we, 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 we encounter a lot of that, unfortunately. Um, South Africa has, has produced two of the biggest uh, crypto scams in, in the history of the space. Uh, the one was uh, M a, a company that called itself MTI. Um, they, they claim to generate you know, returns of 1.5% uh, per day with a trading bot, specialized <laughs> trading bot. Um, they stole they stole billions and billions of rands, and unfortunately, most of that happened through Bitcoin. Um, so they would actually ask people for their deposits in Bitcoin. Um, at one point, it was so bad that people were using the name of that company and Bitcoin interchangeably. So at one point, if you were talking about Bitcoin, people would assume that this is the company that you're talking about because this company is Bitcoin. Like this is what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is this thing that you pay to these guys and then they generate this ridiculous return. So that, that, that went bust, that scam went bust in, in early 2020. Um, and then about a year later, there was this thing called AfriCrypt, which is also a massive scam. And you know, un unfortunately they target uh, poorer communities. Um, people are more desperate and literacy financial literacy is a bigger problem so you know unfortunately it, it's it, it is a very cruel 
cruel irony that these scams are more proliferate in the communities that can least afford it. Yeah, it's uh, it's an awful but common situation, isn't it? Really, it feels like where that happens. As you say, it's simply yeah, the financial literacy is lower, and if people are desperate, then you know, if you're if you're desperate, for example, to buy a loaf of bread, and someone says, yeah, yeah, just give me like this, and I can give you twenty loaves of bread. You're like, uh, okay, <laughs> you know. Whereas if you if you've got more loaves of bread at home, you're going to maybe sit and think about it longer. You've got better time preference. Um, have you have you found uh, that? Well, has, has anyone, as you said uh, earlier, it's not the sort of place people would usually just kind of visit. Like if you're going to go there, it's because you live there. Have you found, uh, have you found any, uh, that anyone has visited like because of this Bitcoin project yet? Like has anyone come to see the area yet at all? Uh, or has anyone contacted you about that yet? Uh, yeah, we've had, we've had one or two people that have uh, visited from overseas. Um, We've had people who were just traveling through the area and were very curious to see what's what's going on. Um, I've I've had I've had some positive experiences with that. Um, you know, we we have because we've always had the NPO and it's been linked to our tourism business. We have in the past taken people up to these areas to show them where the kids come from. But generally, the experience, it, it, it's been a very mixed bag of results. Uh, people sometimes don't appreciate it. Um, it kind of feels like you're going there to show them how people live. But what's the point? Because everybody knows that people suffer and there's poverty and so on. Um, but with, with the Bitcoin Ekasi project, it, it feels like when people visit this particular community, it's, it's, a, lot more, it's, it's a lot more of a positive experience. Um, like there's a reason for going to visit that area now um, because it, it really is truly quite interesting to see that something like this can be adopted in in a community like this where you would least expect it um, you know which is also sort of one of the reasons why I started it because I, I thought to myself that if 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 Bitcoin can work here it can work anyway so there's no there's no real there's no real excuse for somebody in a middle class neighborhood not to use it from a technical perspective if if it can work in in a very very poor community like this then from a technical perspective there's no reason why anyone can't use it so um, so there's been there's been a I'd say a more more authentic reason for people to come and visit um, this this particular community uh, whereas before it, it it always felt a bit strange to take people there um, and to show them where the kids come from um, because it, it really is a very desperate situation that you know it's, it's it's the poorest of the poor that we have traditionally um worked with i've always wanted to i've always wanted to do this sort of thing in in the area that that needs it most you know um, I don't want to go to a middle class neighborhood and do this because what's the point? I want to go to the, you know, the lowest of the low. Um, so it is, it is a really desperate situation. And it's, it's nice to see that people have a positive experience from visiting now um, with the Bitcoin Ikasi project, whereas before that wasn't always the case. Um, I had, uh, well, a two part question. First of all, what does the word Ikasi mean? And then uh, second, like how has the volatility in, in the last few months kind of impacted people's response towards towards Bitcoin? Uh, the word ekasi um, is a derivative of the Afrikaans word lukasi. Um, Afrikaans is uh, based on Dutch. It's about 70% Dutch. Uh, it's spoken mostly by white people in South Africa. There is also a segment of the colored population that speak Afrikaans, uh, but but it's traditionally seen as a as, as a white white language. Um, the word Lukasi um, in English means location, so people started using the word to refer to these communities that were always located on the outskirts of big economic centers. Um, because of South Africa's past, uh, it was it was legal for a person of color to come in and work in the city, but it was illegal for them to live there. 
So if you had had a cleaning lady cleaning your house and you lived in a white neighborhood and she was black, she could come in and spend the day and work, but then she'd have to leave the perimeters of the city. Um, and so what, what ended up happening was these slums um, sort of grew on the outskirts of the cities. So people would live in one of these slums and then work inside the city, but they'd have to leave by a certain time. Um, and, and that's kind of still the case, unfortunately. Uh, not a lot has changed in that regard. It's kind of like this, you know, 25 year hangover that South Africa has from, from the apartheid time. And so the word Lukasi refers to one of these locations, but the word has been taken and changed from Lukasi to Ekasi, which is, it, 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 it's, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's one of those interesting cases where people would take a word that comes from the oppressors, but they make the word their own to refer to themselves in a way that's more positive than what the word was originally meant to mean. So today the word Ekasi refers to one of these locations, but it, it's a reference to the fact that life kind of happens on the street. So there's always music playing. There's always people cooking food on the street. You know, animals are running all over the place, but no one cares. Um, you know, people suffer and struggle, but they still smile. Um, it's kind of it's kind of a reference to the vibe of the township. So an, an Ekasi is a township with a vibe. A slum, a slum with a vibe is an Ekasi. So if you say I'm going to the Ekasi, then it means you're going to the you're going to the slums, but there's a good vibe, <laughs> if if that makes any sense. That's that's sort of the, the meaning of the word. Um, your second question was about volatility and the response people have. Um, yeah, we've obviously, we, we, we have had to, um, you know, some of the shop owners have been reimbursed to a certain extent. So we have made that commitment um, to get this thing off the ground. We realized that the shop owners are the ones that take on the biggest risk. Um, the coaches who we pay in Bitcoin, they earn their salaries on a weekly basis. So the volatility doesn't affect them too much because most of what they earn today, they'll spend tomorrow or the day after that, or the day after that. Um, whereas the shop owners are the ones who've actually got to manage their stock um, and they've got a turnover um, to think about, et cetera. Um, and so the ones that have taken the biggest hits when this volatility happens, we've we've had to sort of make them whole. Um, so the response has been generally positive because we've tried to show a lot of support. We understand that we're introducing something that is completely new and it's going to take time for people to get used to get used to it. Um, but interestingly enough, you know there is one shop owner who's been on board with us the longest, and it's a woman. Uh, her name is Nosifle. Um, and I, I was quite, I was very surprised when, when I was told how much Bitcoin she's holding on to. It's a significant amount of Bitcoin. Um, and, sh and she was actually very calm about it the first time we had that big drop in, um, I think it, did, it dropped down from over 700,000 Rand. So it dropped from about 50 to 42 um and then again from about forty-two thousand to about thirty thousand more recently and those were two two big drops close to each other and she was she was pretty calm about it um you know i think um when we onboarded her she she experienced some of that volatility very quickly and early on um and i think it's something that she's just accepted as as part of the you know, sort of part of the package. Um, this is something that that she's decided to invest in for a long time. So she understands that whatever she's holding is something that she's going to be holding for a long time. She's either going to spend it this week or she's going to hold on to it for years. Um, and I think she understands that, you know, there's, there's a big opportunity there, but it comes with a certain amount of risk. Um, and I'm not sure how or why, but she seems to have accepted that pretty well. Um, and she's holding on to more Bitcoin than any of the other shop owners. Um, and so they're kind of like looking at her for, 
for a sense of guidance. Uh, so, so generally the response hasn't been, has been too, I mean, we've, we haven't, we haven't lost the shop yet. We've never, we've never onboarded a shop to accept Bitcoin. And then the owner turned around at the later stage and said, no, I don't want to accept this anymore. All the shops that we've onboarded so far have stayed on board. Um, so, you know, but I mean, you've got to remember it's a, it's a, it's a small part of their turnover that's coming in Bitcoin at the moment. It's not a significant part of their turnover, so the volatility is 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 the the risk to the volatility is 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 fairly limited. Uh, how common are like mobile uh, electronic payments, like QR code payments and stuff like that? Uh, I know in like Asia, in Latin America, there's uh, quite a few different apps that allow you to pay mobile to mobile. Is this like a new concept to people in South Africa, or are there apps like that that kind of existed before they got exposed to Bitcoin? There are a lot of apps like that. Mobile payments is, is quite common, but not, not in the, the sphere that we are operating in. In the sphere that we're operating in, it's, you know, it's 99.99% paper cash, um, hard physical currency. That's, that's generally the only thing people would use. So scanning a QR code to make a payment, um, it's not a strange thing for a middle-class South African. But for somebody in the community that we're operating in, it's a very strange thing to scan a QR code and, and make a payment. Um, and I think, I think it's actually one of the reasons why the shops are, are curious to start off with, because they, I mean, you can imagine from the perspective of somebody who uses only paper currency, it's quite limiting. There's a lot of things you can't do with paper money because it's physical. Um, and, and when they encounter this digital payment system for the first time, that's cheap to use, um, not expensive like their traditional experience with banking, they, they are quite intrigued by this. Um, I think a lot of them enjoy the experience of, of making digital payments for the first time. Um, it kind of, it feels empowering to be able to do something that should really be normal by now um and and is normal except for these little pockets of society that's still um, at least in south africa that's still you know 100 uh cash based so yeah i think it's 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 a it's 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 a strange experience in the community where we're at but generally speaking in the country not at all um i think and you know most people have mobile phones um it's not it's not such a strange thing we have had to we have had to upgrade one or two of the shop owners with a slightly better phone, um, you know, just for for obvious reasons. You know, if you've got a really crap phone, you you, know, you don't want the phone to die in the middle of the transaction. Um, but generally speaking, most people have have access to these devices, and they're pretty cheap these days. Okay, you can pick up smartphones really low prices uh, these days, especially like some of the. Because I know there's ones that um, there's different operating systems as well. Like there's it's Google's Android and there's iPhone. Then there's also that other operating system in like some of the much, much cheaper phones. I can't remember the name of it, but um, but yeah, there's also that available. Um, yeah, well, we're running about an hour. Um, so it's probably a good time to, to wrap up. But um, yeah, I, I appreciate you coming on home. It's been awesome to hear about the project and like understand where you guys came from. And I say like one thing to really get out there to anyone listening is, hey, if there's any way you think you can help, get in touch. Uh, and where can people get in touch with you? Uh, we've got a Twitter profile, um, Bitcoin Ekasi. Uh, that's been the main sort of way that we've tried to reach out to um, to the Bitcoin community and then build a bit of an audience. Uh, we've also got a website, BitcoinEkasi.com. Um, we've had some troubles with the domain. So uh, alternative domain is Bitcoin-Bay.org. Um, which has proven a bit a bit more reliable, but yeah, I mean, anybody want to reach out, um, please do. Um, I don't always respond within <laughs> within an hour. Um, it's it, it's been a little bit overwhelming, to be honest. Um, I didn't think that I, I didn't think the effort would would draw as much attention as it did within the first couple of months. Um, so it, it's been slightly overwhelming, but uh, yeah, please reach out happy absolutely and anyone yeah so anything really it sounds like anything to do with the wallet anything to do with donations um 
yeah anything to do with it essentially it sounds like anyone could be of use and um yeah, Bitcoin Akazi spelled E K A S I, I believe, um, which is right. So yeah, Bitcoin Akazi, Bitcoin E K A S I, Twitter, and as you said, .com hopefully works. So yeah, thanks thanks for coming on. It's I, I've 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 enjoyed it. I've learned a lot of new things about uh, another new uh, Bitcoin area. Hopefully, we'll be doing these podcasts for a little while, and then we're gonna go. Well, there's too many Bitcoin places now. Bitcoin's just you know accepted everywhere. So f it, you know. There's no point doing a podcast about that anymore. That's the, the dream. But for now, it's still a unique thing and it's still awesome to hear about. And hopefully it can expand or you can get other projects nearby that kind of it starts to merge and then people are crossing over and, and kind of paying and, and you're creating that circular economy that runs itself. Um, but yeah, thanks to you. Thanks to everyone out there for listening. We appreciate you. We hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new today. I uh, hope you have an amazing uh, day, week, month, year. Uh, keep loving life keep being happy and most of all keep buying bitcoin take care and we'll see you later